Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's truly a delight to be here with my co-panelist, Rajan, here today to talk about the evolution of the web here in India. It's an exciting time for us, increasing affordability, increasing access, the emergence of the social web. And uh, we believe that all of those factors is going to result in many wildly successful winners. And we're going to see these winners come from internet companies, whether they're in gaming, news, e-commerce, and many others. And we're also going to see winners come from the traditional companies and non-internet companies, traditional institutions, that are all leveraging the power of the social web. And we believe these winners will share three different characteristics. One, they will put people at the center. Two, they will win the mobile experience. And three, they'll break the language barrier. I want to talk about some examples that embody these three principles that hopefully illustrates this. So number one, I want to talk about an Economic Times article last month that talked about farmers talking about pricing strategies using Facebook. So this was a case in Sangli where there was oversupply. Now it turns out that a local farmer, Atul Salunke, he used Facebook on his phone, collaborated with farmers across different parts of India, and within days he mobilized 25,000 farmers. They put together a plan, they executed on the plan, and they reversed this. This is Savan, a site that brings together the best of Bollywood and Tamil music. We launched with them as a Facebook Open Graph partner. <clears throat> and within four weeks, we saw the daily active users of Savan grow 40 times, the content shared fourfold, the monthly active users went up from 35,000 to 785,000, and there were 750 million Facebook stories shared. And this is happening not just in this example, but other examples where partners are taking the power of social and really transforming their experience. This is my timeline, the story of my life. And in the last two months, we have had about 3,000 timeline applications that have been released. And if you look at them, they're across verticals. Pinterest, uh, which is an online pin board for sharing, organizing things that you love, they grew their active users 60%. And Pose, uh, which is another community that shares about fashion and style, they grew their uh, users both on the mobile as well as the web, 5x. Now I'll switch to my final example here, which is again in a completely different space, the Delhi Traffic Police. A great example of how the government is using the power of the social web to communicate with people, real-time updates, and increase civilian engagement. Um, it was fascinating for me to hear that the Delhi Traffic Police got one of the most popular Indian brand awards by a strategy firm, iFern. And certainly, I haven't seen very many places where a traffic police gets a most popular brand award. And I congratulate uh, you know, the Delhi Traffic Police and the people associated with it for that transformation that they have caused. When you add up all these examples, you can see that those transformations are happening. People are changing how they connect and how they share. Industries are transforming. Institutions are transforming. And that notion of putting people at the center is really at the core of Facebook's mission to make the world more open and connected. 845 million users worldwide, out of which 445 million people access, via, access Facebook via the mobile. We hit a milestone in December last year where 500, people, 500 million people access Facebook that day. Bringing it closer to home, right here in India, when we announced that we were opening the office in India two years ago, we had 8 million users. And we are truly humbled to see 46 million users now use, uh, use uh, Facebook to connect and to share in India. And over half of them use it uh, from their mobile device. So. Let's talk a little bit more in the last couple of minutes on the mobile aspect as well as the regional aspect. And I think you've seen the mobile aspect through the examples, whether it's Savan where they're accessing on a mobile and they're using it to share music, or when you're out on the streets in Delhi and you're taking pictures and uploading it on the Delhi traffic police side. 
But let's, let's spend a little bit to talk about some of the stats behind this. In India, Comstow stats, 72% of mobile internet is still used on the feature phone. So for someone to win the web in India, they have to have a focus on feature phones, and you have to have a solution that's not just smartphone, but covers the feature phone as well. And we are truly excited about what the government is doing in the national broadband policy and their focus on last mile connectivity. Um, some of the things that we have done is invest heavily in our uh, rich experience on the feature phone um, and uh, strong partnership with mobile operators to provide Facebook Zero that significantly increases the affordability of this device. The same kind of numbers you can see when you think about language name. Um, you know, 5% of users use, consume Indic content on the web. And if you compare that with what's happening outside of the web, 5x use Indic, Indic on, uh, on print compared to English. And we, when you look at TV, the consumption goes up 15x. There's a lot that needs to be done to offer that same kind of access on uh, the web. And I really look forward to collaborating on solving that problem. Um, this is an example of Derek Bhaskar, one of our open graph partners that's, again, using the power of the web to transform how people consume local uh, Hindi content. And they did things like social plugins. They did things like use Facebook for their Bhaskar People's Choice Award. And that's what's been most um, heartwarming, is just what people have done using the power of social, not taking, taking that information far off of Facebook and just transforming experiences. But if you put all of this together, it's just the beginning. We at Facebook believe that we globally, internally, are 1% done in our journey. And if you think about what's happening in India, we are even, uh, you know, we're just at the beginning. Um, it's going to take a lot of bold innovation. It's going to take an attitude where we are not afraid to make mistakes and, and embrace a real em embracement of uh, bold innovation and rapid iteration to make the changes happen and to really realize the potential of the web. Excited about what's to come. Thank you. Rajiv, you want to be a wired up? You're already wired up. You work for Google. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here. Um, you know, it's very interesting. The topic at hand is who's going to win the web? You know, the problem about this question is if you've actually been in the technology business for a long period of time and unfortunately have had that luxury, nobody really knows, right? In 1995, there were 15 million internet users in the world. There was a conference in 1996 in the Valley. And actually, I was on a panel that was quite similar. The same question was asked. Do you know the names of the companies were discussed at the time? Alta Vista. Anybody remember Alta Vista? There you go. One person does. Netscape. I know, Raj, you remember Netscape, Raj. Yahoo. A lot of people remember Yahoo, right? Five years go by. By the way, Yahoo is still a very, it's great company, still around. You know, year 2000 comes by, there are about 200 million internet users in the world. Similar debate, names had changed. 2005 comes by, there are 1 billion internet users in the world. Names had changed, same debate. In the year 2011, we have 2 billion people on the internet. And you know what? We're still having the debate. And the names have changed, and now it just happens to be Facebook and Google. See, the only thing that we can actually tell about who's going to win the web is the consumer. The ultimate winners on the internet are consumers, first and foremost, and second, are businesses that embrace the web. The platforms change. The delivery mechanisms change. The actual technology changes. But the winners on the web are the consumers. Right? Think about an industry that has gone from having 15 million internet users in the year 1995 to an industry now that has 2 billion users. You know, I noticed that the theme of the conference is Asia. 
950 million out of the 2 billion users on the internet are from Asia. 450 million of them access the internet with a mobile phone. I think the impact that the internet has had on consumers, which really is all of us in how we live our lives, is very well known. Right? If you just think back to five years or 10 years, what you could and you couldn't do is very, very different from what you can do today. That's actually not that interesting. If you think about the future and you think about the internet, what's a lot more interesting is what might consumers expect and what will consumers expect of the internet in the next four, five, six, seven years. And in many ways, the only thing that you can predict about winning is that consumers are going to win. And the real question is, how much are they going to win? How much value will move out of other ecosystems and into the hands of consumers, right? And if you think about the question that way, what's very interesting is there are four mega trends on the internet today. Kittika talked about one of them, which is social, which I'll get to. But actually, the most potent trend on the internet today is mobile, which Kittika talked about. There will be a billion consumers who will join the internet for the first time over the next four years. By the year 2015, the world will have three billion internet users. The next billion will all be connected over a mobile device. Out of the billion, 200 million of them will actually come from India. India today has 120 million internet users. And by the year 2014, at the latest 2015, the industry estimates are that we will have 300 million plus users. The next 200 million users in India will all get to the, come to the internet, will get connected for the first time through a mobile device. You know, it's very interesting how the mobile device has dramatically changed how we live. How many of you actually have an alarm clock? Anybody have an alarm clock? That's great. Well, one person does. You know, there are phones that now have alarms in them. So this morning, 6 o'clock, alarm wakes you up. It's your phone, right? And then day goes by. It's interesting. Today, I was actually very, two very important things happened. One, this conference, Kali, that you have put up. It's a marvelous conference. And second was the budget. And I happened to work in Gurgaon, so I was on my way from Gurgaon to Delhi. And on the way, I wanted to catch up with what's really happened with the budget. Well, the way I actually caught up with the budget was not by trying to find a TV and get very close to a TV and try to figure out which channel might actually have great coverage. The way I found out was actually by going to Twitter. If you go to Twitter, that's the fastest way to get the best coverage of breaking news today. I was on my phone, and then I wanted to see, you know, there was a session that I really wanted to make it to, which was the session with the sportsman, right? Can India really produce more Olympic gold medalists? How did I actually catch up on that event? I couldn't get here on time. I was on my phone. I was on the live stream, Kali, that you all did, which is absolutely brilliant. Now, these are use cases or things that users with high band, with mobile, mobile connections, with generally smartphones can do. But if you think about another billion users who are going to come online, and almost all of them, by the way, from the emerging markets, you can imagine the kind of applications that will become very, very successful. Google nor Facebook can predict what those applications are, unfortunately. We'd love to think that. I'm sure Kritika and the Facebook team would love to think they can predict what will win in the web. The only prediction about who will win the web is the consumer. So mobile is a mega trend. The second interesting trend really is video. You know, Kritika talked about 850 million social network or Facebook users today in the world, which is a very large number. 
You know what's an interesting number? Is there are a billion consumers today who consume online video. YouTube, which is an online video network that's part of Google, actually has 800 million monthly users. That's a big number, by the way. And in India, YouTube has 25 million active users on a 30-day basis. And even in India, where we are constrained on bandwidth and so on and so forth, there are more young people on YouTube watching YouTube every single day than MTV. So now if you take online video and say, how is that going to transform the lives of consumers, you actually don't have to think about it very hard. Why is it that when I watch TV, I have to watch an ad that I don't really care about? Well, guess what? Today, if you're on several online video platforms, including YouTube, there's actually the ability for you to log out of an ad. You start watching a video, you see an ad, immediately there's a pop button that pops up saying, you don't want to watch the ad, just click here. The value moves to the consumer. Right? So video is a second very big theme. The third theme is social. I think social has many, many facets to it. Facebook, I think I talk very articulately about the value that Facebook can bring to consumers, to brands, and so on and so forth. But actually, Social is a massive arena and will transform many, many industries. You know, it's very interesting. I love news. I just can't read news that has more than 14 characters anymore. If you can't tell me the news in 14 characters, that gets to be a challenge. And I'm actually not the target audience for Twitter today, right? For that matter, if you're trying to hire employees the days of calling a search firm are dead. Where do you go? You go to LinkedIn. If you want to actually have a hangout with your five best friends who happen to be around the world, you actually don't have to go to Vegas anymore. There's a product called Google Plus Hangouts, which I use a lot, where your friends from around the world, and I know somebody out here saying, you got to be kidding me, man. I want to go to Vegas. I know you can go to Vegas, but I can't go to Vegas every day because my wife wouldn't let me live there. But you know, my college buddies, we like to talk about Vegas, what we do in Vegas, and we hang out, which is multi-party video for free. Right? So social is the third big stream. And then the fourth one really is around how business is being impacted by the internet. At a very simplistic level, the internet is transforming business, but specifically is becoming the single biggest enabler for growth for small and medium businesses. McKinsey recently released a report that talked about small businesses that embrace the internet and small businesses that don't embrace the internet. If you look at small businesses that embrace the internet very well versus those that don't, the ones that do grow nine times faster than the ones that don't. On average, Small businesses can double their revenue growth by embracing the internet, finding new customers, engaging new customers, increasing exports, etc. So clearly businesses, particularly led by small businesses, will benefit enormously from the internet. The other type of businesses that will be impacted either positively or negatively are large businesses. How many of you have bought a CD for your music in the last six months? Anybody? I see one hand there. You know, there's an entire industry where value has moved to the consumer. Why buy a CD when you only want one song? Buy just the song that you want, and you pay one-tenth the price. Books, and so on and so forth. We believe that the first wave of industries that have been impacted either positively or negatively by the internet are ones that deal in digital products. The next wave will be the industries that deal in physical products. And even in a market like India, with 120 million users, but still a reasonably young internet market, e-commerce has hit $6 billion of revenue in the year 2011. Now, we could look at 6 billion and say, look, it's a very small percentage of total retail in India, 
total retail in India is 450 million. Or, you know, those of us in the advertising industry, like Google and others, could look at it and say, you know what, the entire advertising industry in India is only $5.5 billion. E-commerce in the year 2011 crossed 6 billion, and this year will be 9 billion. And e-commerce is about physical product. So in summary, our view is really very simple. To focus on whether one technology company or another technology company will win the war on the internet is actually not a very fruitful question because the answer changes every five years. But I think to focus on the consumer, deeply understand the consumer, and understand how consumers will benefit from the web, and they are the ultimate winners of the web, is a very interesting question. And I'd like to end with one thought about India. At 120 million users, we are the third largest internet user market in the world. The third largest. There are only two markets that are bigger. The US at 300 million and China at about 500 million. We have the ability as India over the next three to four years to get to 300 to 400 million users. And the impact of doing that on this country is unimaginable, unimaginable. You know, I had the fortune of sitting through one of our panels where we had two distinguished politicians of our era speak about the challenges of politics. See, you don't have to go to the rural village if the village is connected to you, right? Because one of the issues was how do I go meet all these people because they're spread across 100 kilometers and 80 kilometers. Well, actually, my mother lives several thousand miles away. I can video chat with her every single day if I want. So the impact that India will have by adopting the internet, by embracing the internet, by accelerating deployment of the internet can be absolutely enormous. McKinsey in this study that they recently published estimated that 3.2% of GDP of India is already attributable to the internet. 3.2% of GDP. And that's at a stage where we haven't even started. So as India, what we're really hoping and why we're here is not to decide what platform's going to win, is to make India benefit from the Indians. So let's focus on how do we get the next 300 million online, and then let's focus on how to get the next billion online. Thank you.